Hi, um, today is July 1st, 2022, and this is a video for IGCSE Ad Maths students. Um, we're going to go over a challenge problem from Chapter 3, page 74, from the book by Sue Pemberton, textbook. Uh, I'll just make a quick point about these challenge problems. Uh, they tend to be more difficult than the exam problems, and they're not required for you to work on, but they are great practice, and they certainly will help you to become a better mathematician. And I'm really excited and very happy that some of you are working on them. And I understand uh, they're difficult, and you might get stuck. And that's the point. Uh, mathematics is a field in which more often than not, we don't know the answer and we don't know how to do it. Uh, that's what mathematicians do. They work on problems that they do not understand. And so that type of practice is really good for you. Uh, of course, you need to do some exercises and you need to do drills and you need to reinforce your basic skills. But working on challenge problems like this will really make you a stronger mathematician. So let's get into it. The challenge question, you can see there are three questions. There are three circles there. The three circles are all resting on a common tangent line. Uh, and the blue circle has a radius of two, and the green circle has a radius of one. And the red circle, the smaller red circle, as you can see, is tangent to both the blue and the green circles and to the common tangent line. It's wedged in between there. So our task is to find the radius of the smaller circle. So how do we uh, go about this? I think this is a geometry problem. Um, clearly, it's going to involve some square roots. Uh, typically, geometry problems like this, you have pi r squared, you have Pythagoras, you get lots of squares and square roots. Uh, so therefore, you need to draw it somehow. Of course, I would usually draw it using some software uh, such as GeoGebra. So here I have it in GeoGebra. And um, I guess I would try to make it a little bit um, simpler. Let's, yeah, let's try it from here. Uh, let's just start by drawing the blue circle. And then the first thing we need to do after we draw the blue circle is, and you can see I've put the blue circle with a center at 2, 2. That kind of makes sense. Then two, two, and uh, it is a circle of radius two. So all three circles are resting on the x-axis. And now the, the first thing we have to do is figure out where precisely to locate the green circle. Um, well, that's not too hard to figure out uh, if we construct this triangle that I've done in magenta or pink. And you can see that uh, this line here, CD, from the center of the blue circle to the center of the green circle, this line segment, must have a length of 3 because it's a radius of 2 plus a radius of 1. And, of course, we know the green circle has a radius of 1, so DE is 1. Therefore, this leg here must have a length that is the square root of 9 minus 1 by Pythagoras, because, of course, at E here we have a right angle. And, um, of course, the square root of 8, which is 2 root 2. So now I know that this line segment, CE, is 2 root 2, which tells me that after I extend, I'm going to have 2 plus, uh, well, it's going to be 2 root 2, which is 2 plus 2 root 2. This is 2 root 2, and that's 2. It's going to give me a, uh, an x-coordinate of 4.828 here, which will be the center of the circle. And, of course, it's the center of the circle is 1 unit high from the x-axis. So that tells me where to locate the green circle using my software. I'm going to put the center here at 2 plus 2 root 2 comma 1 and a radius of 1. And that makes it much easier for me to draw the red circle. And of course, in the red circle, I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to indicate the radius r because what are we asked to find? We're asked to find the radius of the smaller circle. Okay, I think I now know the the question here, so I, I think I'll just remove this. Um, let's see how. To... There it goes. Okay, and um, now I can start thinking about how to solve the problem. Now, you have to find R. And in order to find R, here's the key to the question. We're going to need to construct some triangles that include R. Because we need to get some formulas, some relationships between R and the things that we know. What do we know? We know the radius of the blue circle is 2, and the radius of the green circle is 1. And we know a few other things like the locations of the centers here. And of course, that these are tangent, so there will be a, uh, a tangent line, which meets the radius at a right angle. So those are the things that we know. So we need to start thinking about how to construct uh, some triangles that will give us formulas for R. So I can see that R is kind of pointed here at the center of the blue circle. So I can see there's a line segment going from C to O, which is going to be 2 plus R. So why don't I include that? And let's see if I can, uh, if I can construct a triangle that will help me here. All right, so why don't I try this? I'm going to construct this polygon uh where is it looks like it's right about here yeah that's a pretty useful polygon there or maybe i can even yeah maybe that's not quite the polygon i want maybe the polygon i want this one no see i've been playing around with this as you can see and um there it is. Okay, there's the polygon I want. Now look at, see, so that's, an, that's something that you have to do when you're solving problems like this, is try to construct different polygons until you get one that, you know, in this case, triangles, that might give you some useful information. So in this case, I've got a right triangle. Uh, it looks like the, uh, it looks pretty straightforward here. Um, and it's going to have some side lengths here that I can figure out, okay? So the hypotenuse is clearly going to be 2 plus r, and then um, here, this little distance is r, and of course the radius of the blue circle is 2, so this leg is 2 minus r, and then I'm not sure exactly what this side length is, so let me call it a, all right, and let me try to figure out how to calculate A by using the Pythagorean theorem. So A is going to equal the square root of 2 plus R quantity squared minus 2 minus R quantity squared. That's going to give me um, 4 plus 4R plus R squared minus 4 minus negative 4R minus R squared. So that's going to give me... Uh, square root of 8r or 2 root 2 root r okay so there now i have a an expression here for a now remember i've already figured out the length of this line up here from c to e is 2 root 2 so maybe what i could do now is find an expression for this segment over here in the green circle in the red and the green circle by constructing a, a similar, I mean, not necessarily a similar triangle, but by using the same type of process to construct a different triangle using the green circle with radius 1. So let's try to figure out how to do that. Maybe this is it. There it is. Okay, now let's think about, uh, again, let's try to think about what would the lengths be here. So um, the hypotenuse, of course, is going to be 1 plus r because there's the 1. And there's the r and then the right hand side there is going to be one minus r and of course i don't know what this lower length is so let me call it b okay and to figure out b 
I can again use the Pythagorean theorem and b is equal to square root of 1 plus r quantity squared minus 1 minus r quantity squared, which turns out to be 2 root r. So now I've got an expression for a and an expression for b, and I know how to set those equal to c, e. So let's try that. Uh, a plus b equals 2 root 2, um, which I've learned at the beginning. And that implies that uh, root r times 2 plus 2 root 2 equals, so th there it is. This is, I've factored out root r from a plus b. And then I've got um, 2 plus 2 root 2. So that gives me an expression for a plus b, which is equal to c e, which is 2 root 2. So now I can go ahead and solve for r. And what do I get? I get that r is going to equal, let's see, if I square both sides here, I'm going to get that r equals 2 root 2 squared, which is 8, divided by this quantity squared, which is going to give me uh, 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 4 root 2 twice, so it's 12 plus 8 root 2, and that, of course, I can simplify to 2 upon 3 plus 2 root 2. Then if I multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, I, which, of course, is 3 minus 2 root 2, I get 2 times 3 is 6. And 2 times minus 2 root 2 is minus 4 root 2. And then on the denominator, I get 9 minus 8, which is 1. So I've got the answer. And that's how to do exercise the challenge question from chapter three. I hope that's helpful. Keep working hard. I know that uh, you guys are working hard on your mathematics and I'm very happy to see you working on uh, questions like this. Uh, as you can see, it's not easy and I did have to do some playing around with it in order to get it. But in the end, uh, I've got it and I've typed it up nicely in GeoGebra, and I've got all the tangents working and all of that, and those are good skills for you to develop. Thank you, and bye-bye.